today we're going to we're going to be talking about uh, walking tall for Jesus. And I don't know how many of you saw that little trailer that I put out on on, on social media. Uh, Brian said he's never seen me mad before, and I said, "Well, that's when I get mad. I get mad at the devil." And so, but um, as I was kind of praying about, thinking about this uh, this message, kind of almost like tying together all that we've been talking about. Uh, with the different gospel prayers in the book of Ephesians and how Paul kind of brings this all to a conclusion in Ephesians chapter 6. And there's this verse that he tells us to, to, to stand, you know, to stand against the wiles, the tactics uh, of the enemy. And it just kind of, Brian had brought to me the, that, I, uh, the movie, the, the Rock, <laughs> Walking Tall. And I was like, you know, sometimes you just got to fight. Sometimes you just got to get mad. Sometimes you can't be like, I'm not going to get pushed around uh, any longer. The enemy needs to remember, be reminded his place, you know, in this packing order. That the Bible says that he is under the feet of Jesus. Amen. And so we want to kind of break that down here tonight and talk about uh, spiritual warfare on this sense. About what it means to, to walk tall uh, for Jesus. How to engage uh, in spiritual war warfare, both in our, our personal lives, you know, with our individual, with ourselves, with our, our families and our loved ones, but also taking it bigger in the sense of advancing God's kingdom in our communities and, and, and around the nation and, and the value that, that God places upon you and the partnership that, that we're supposed to, to, to do with him. So let's go ahead and open up to Ephesians uh, chapter 6. Verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And he says, finally, my brethren. And so he kind of, you hear this word finally there. And again, this, he's, he's coming to the end. He, everything that he's just been talking about in the last five chapters, and so many of those things we've talked about in pieces, you know, here in these evenings, you know, going through the different uh, powerful Bible prayers. But he says, finally, my brothers, brethren, be strong, he says, in the Lord. And then I'd circle that word in, and he says, in the power of his might. And circle that one again. He's not telling us to say, finally, listen, you got to be strong in your own strength, in your own ability. You've got to try to earn something for God. You've got to try to, you know, face the enemy on your own, you know, by the power of your own your own strength. He says, no, he says, be strong, my friends, in the Lord. And he says, be strong in the power of his might. And if he's saying this to us here, then what, what he's saying is very possible. Everything in the word of God is true. It, he, God never lies. Everything is true. So when he says here, listen, you can be strong in the Lord. And we're going to come back to that in a little bit. In the power of his might or in his strength. And we've talked about his power. We're going to touch on this again in a minute. But let me just continue to going here. He says in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. You may be able to walk tall in Christ against the wiles of the devil, against the schemes of the devil. You know, you know the devil's a schemer. He's, he's, he's got plans. You know, he wants to, to, to destroy you. Your, your family, our nation. But verse 12, Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I want you to notice here, he's not calling you to spiritual war warfare. Spiritual warfare is not a calling that God gives and said, okay, listen, you might say, well, you know, God's called me to a to deeper level of prayer. I'm supposed to be, you know, doing spiritual warfare. He's saying, no, that's not what he's saying here. He's saying, listen, you're in spiritual warfare. It's not, you're, not, you're not called to it. You don't step into it. You don't enter into it. You got saved and you're in it. I mean, that's just, that's just it. He says, you, you may not understand it. You may not see it. But that's the reality of the, of the situation. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And so he breaks this part down in verse 12, 
And what he's speaking about here when he talks about principalities and powers and rulers, and you'll see this other areas in Scripture, but he's talking about a hierarchy when it comes to uh, the realm of the demonic, when it comes to the, 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 the spirits that, that fell with Satan uh, thousands of years ago. You know, the, the Bible teaches that one-third of the angels rebelled against God with Lucifer, and they fell to this earth. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about a very a hierarchy. You know, often we're like, well, I'm, you know, the devil's coming at me. Well, the devil's not God. There's, there's only, there's only, he's only one being, and he can only be in one place. And so he operates, you know, as the king of this kingdom, but he has, he has governors and, and rulers and, 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 and generals and, and, and this hierarchy that kind of breaks down. And so, and so he's saying here, listen, this is what we're wrestling against. We're not wrestling against other human beings. We're wrestling against this hierarchy of the demonic realm that is, that is real. We may not see it, but it's right there. And sometimes we can, we can hear things about that, and it can, if we, we lack understanding, it can cause you know, some, a little bit of fear. It can cause a little bit of intimidation. It's like, oh, man, there's this whole demonic, you know, uh, a, a force uh, that is out there that, it, that is coming against the church. And, 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 but, but I want us to hear something here that, they, that, that Paul is teaching us from a place of victory, not a place of, of, of fear. Because he says here, listen, just refocus on who we're warring against, who we have to walk tall against, who we have to stand against. He says in verse 13, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So he says, man, tough times are going to come. Man, those, those, that, that realm, that, that, those evil forces are, have plans uh, to destroy you. Uh, C.S. Lewis wrote this book um, years ago called, if you haven't read it, it's kind of an interesting read, called The Screw Tape Letters. And, the, and it's very interesting. The screw tape letters is he writes it from the point of view of this young demon. And this young demon, you know, is writing these letters to his uncle demon asking for, you know, advice on how to fulfill his assignments against the enemy. Now, his enemy is God. And who he's trying to destroy, who he's scheming against is us. And it's, it's just very, it's really interesting, you know, the way that he writes this, this book and, you know, and just to think about how the enemy has these plans and, and these schemes. And a lot of times in the church, you start talking about spiritual warfare, people get really worked up. And they're like, oh, man, man, I'm just, listen, you got to pray for me, brother. Listen, Tony, the enemy's just out to get me. You know, it's like, you know, I'm under attack. And we get this thing where we want to elevate we want to elevate the power of, of the enemy. And we read this, this part here and we think, man, I mean, there is the devil and there's these principalities and, and rule demonic spirits that rule over different areas. You know, what, what can I do about this? What does God expect from me in this area? Well, he tells us to stand. But he says, stand therefore, girded with the, with, with the girded, you're girding your waist with truth. So he begins to go through this, uh, this part of the scripture that we've heard preached many times, we're very familiar with, and he starts laying out the armor of God. And, you know, we can talk, we can have displays, but the armor, we've done that, I've done that before, you know, trying to explain it. But just instead of talking about the actual armor pieces, I want to talk about the, what he's representing here and the reality of what he's trying to, to tell us so that we're able to stand against the powers of darkness and walk from a place of victory and a place of, of authority. And so he says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. And so if we're going to walk in the victory, if we're going to stand tall against demonic spirits, if we're going to stand tall against what the enemy is trying to do to us and to our families, to our community, to our nation, even to our world. If we're going to stand, he says, the first thing that you have to know 
that you have to wrap, that you have to gird yourself with every day is truth. And, and what truth is he talking about? Well, again, he said, he got here in verse 10, says, finally, my brethren. You know, so if we go back to the very beginning of the book of Ephesians, we get into, we get into chapter 1 and chapter 2, and we, we, we talk about uh, this, this, this truth, the, the, the truth that, that Paul began to speak to us was who we are in Christ. He says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that Christ, that the God has raised us up and seated us together in Christ in heavenly places. And I know we quote that verse, and I've said that verse so, so many times. And, and I know Kelly likes to tease me sometimes, like you, you say the same verses again. And, and, it, and there's a reason, I told you the other day, there's a reason that I do this. I do that. You know, and, and there's, I believe there's a shift that's happening in, in the church right now. And, and it, the same shift happened years ago before the first great awakening, before the second great awakening, where there, there was a shift and where God began to, to, to turn, you know, we don't use these words, but began to shift pastors into, into apostles. You know, he, where, where, where people started, when they had that prophetic conference we were talking about, but where they began to shift people, you know, where God, people are like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a sheep, you know, you know, uh, you know bec but becoming an army instead. And I believe that God is shifting us, you know, to be, to, to begin to change our mindset to where we're not like, I'm coming to church just to be fed. You know, I'm coming to church just to hear a good teaching, just so that I can be encouraged, just so that I, you know, that's not what it's ab about anymore. I mean, I know there are churches that are, that are doing that, but I believe that there is a shift. God is getting ready to pour out his spirit. There's a revival that's getting ready to come. There's a shaking that's happening. And, and, and God is developing soldiers for his army. You know, and so how do we see ourselves? Do we see, am I just a church attender, a member where I come and, and sit down and, and get a good teaching and, and, and leave afterwards? And, and if that's you, I mean, that's, that's fine, I suppose. But you're going to miss out on so much of what God has for you. You know, what the Holy Spirit is doing right now is he's raising up soldiers. He's raising up warriors. He's raising up mighty men and women of God who will know who they are in Christ, who will walk in victory. Jesus is coming back soon, and he's raising up a people that will minister in the authority of the word of God with the heart of God to see lost people come into the kingdom of God, who will minister through the power of the Holy Spirit, who will minister from a place of authority. So when we say in Ephesians chapter 2 that God has raised us up and seated us together in Christ in heavenly places, what does that mean? Well, the, the truth is the reality is that we have to know, is to, to know who we are. When you say that God has raised us up and seated us in Christ in heavenly places, where is Christ seated at? He is seated in a place of authority at the right hand of the Father. And, and, and what, what the Bible is telling us, and if we can grasp this understanding, this reality, is that we, in Christ, are seated with him. That we're in that place of authority. You know, Ephesians chapter 1 said that the power of God raised Christ from the dead, seated him at the right hand of the Father, placed all power, just what we are reading about here, all dominion, all principalities, all authority, Every name, everything was placed under the feet of Christ. And if we are, as the body of Christ, are seated in Christ in heavenly places, that tells me the truth is that the devil is under my feet. And to walk in that reality when we're talking about, you know, spiritual warfare, sometimes we can, we can sensationalize it in this way of, you know, where the, the enemy is doing all these things, sometimes we just got to gird some truth around our waist and remember who we are in Christ. If we start getting ourselves all worked up in our brain and start feeling defeated, start when depression starts to kind of want to get in our mind or we start looking at the world and we're like, oh my gosh, what can anybody do uh, to, about that? We got to remember 
who we are in Christ, that we are seated in Christ, that the enemy is under our feet. And so when we come to a place of, we talk about spiritual warfare, listen, it's not a, it's not a battle in the sense of where, man, we're, we're throwing blows. Let me tell you what, I mean, we made the funny, the video, and we were kind of, you know, making it look like walking tall, you know, but, but listen, I'm not throwing blows with the devil. You know, the devil's under my feet. Right. I just remind him where, to get back where you belong. Right. And so this is the place where we need to be at, is that when, he, when, when, the, when he's coming against us, he's coming against our family, he's coming against our nation, we need to activate, you know, the truth of who we are in Christ and remind the enemy where he belongs. You know, to stand firm in that truth, in that reality, knowing who that I am in Christ, that I am a son of God. A, you can say I'm a daughter of God. I'm an heir and a co-heir with Christ. We say these words, but man, take a second to really think about the reality of these words that the, that the Bible says that I'm a child of God, Tyler. I mean, the, the reality of that, that truth should shake us that we were like, man, I'm not worried about this or, or that. We can get so discouraged at, at times in our lives when things come up. But, but the, the, first, the first step, I got to remember who I am in Christ. When I know who I am in the place where the enemy belongs, that's where he's going to go. You know, we're not, we're, not, we're not throwing blows. We're not, you know, we're having that thing. Listen, I'm not, you're, you're a liar. You know, you're going to get back to where you belong. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, I say all the time, you know, that but we have been delivered from every power of darkness. And, we've, and I would encourage you to write that down if you forget. But every time discouragement wants to come in your mind where that cloud of darkness wants to come over your brain, you know, I remind, remind yourself, I have been set free from every power of darkness. And so, so the first thing we do, you know, is we're going to be standing against the schemes, the, the tactic of the enemy is we got to put on that truth. You know, that, that truth is that God also, he has called you and chosen you as last day believers to be the one to bring God's perfect will, to bring his kingdom here to this earth and to walk in that truth. He says, he goes on in verse 14, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, what's this other reality? As, as we're saying we're going to stand against the schemes of, of the enemy, as I'm going to get in my prayer closet, and I'm going to begin to pray for our nation. When I, you know, someone might say, well, what, what's my prayer going to do? What's the words coming out of my mouth? How is that going to change anything? You know, sometimes I feel like I'm praying and it's just, what, is it really doing anything? My friends, it's doing something. If you're a born-again believer and you're praying in faith, remember who you are in Christ, the truth of, of, of your position, of, of, of your place of, of, of authority. Too often we want to walk in a false sense of humility. You know, I'm not going to walk in a false sense of humility. I'm going to make my flesh humble. But, man, I'm going to walk in the reality that I'm a child of, 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 of God. You know, that I'm a son of, of the king. we got to walk in that reality. And then he says, every day, put on that breastplate of righteousness. What, what is that all about? Man, I, I know that I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. You know, I was, you know, Ephesians chapter 2 says I was, a, I was a son of disobedience. I was a child of wrath. I was going to spend eternity in hell. But God loved me so much that he adopted me to be in his family. He bought me with his very blood. He washed away and pardoned me of my sins. And the Bible now says that I'm the righteousness of God. And so the reality of that, what, what does that mean when I put that on every day when it comes to standing against the enemy? That means that I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to succumb to the tactics, the schemes of the devil. They want to tell me, "Oh, you're going to fall into this sin again. You're going to do this again." No, I I am walking in the righteousness of God, holy and blameless. You know, Jesus said, "You'll be perfect, just as my heavenly Father is perfect." When temptation wants to come, I'm going to remember I've got that 
that breastplate of righteousness on. It's not something that I'm earning. It's who I am in Christ. And so again, I can come against the enemy from a place of authority and from a place of victory. He goes on and says, and having, your, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The word I want to focus on here is preparation. And how important it is to continually being preparing ourselves in the Lord, being in the Word, studying the Word of God, practicing confessing faith, you know, practicing, you know, memorizing Scripture, you know, um, uh, prayer, preparing ourselves, you know, because we never know when the opportunity is going to come where God's going to say, "It's this, and it's your time." You're not going to, you know, what we, we, David prepared himself when he was being a shepherd boy. He could have been like, man, this is, everybody else has got these cool jobs, and here I am taking care of sheep. But while he was doing the job that nobody else wanted, he was continuing to prepare himself in the reality of who he was in the, in the Lord. He, worked, his, he, he continued to strengthen his faith in the Lord, and when his opportunity came, to face Goliath, he was prepared, and he was ready to go. And so sometimes we're like, you know, I'm feeling really good today, so you know, I'm just going to kind of take it easy. Man, being a believer is an everyday thing. I'm continuing to prepare myself every single day because I don't know which day I'm going to have to fight. I don't know which day where I'm going to have to be praying for this other person, you know, where I'm going to, you know, the scripture talks about, you know, we talked about with, with prayer and fasting and, and how the Jesus, the disciples like, why couldn't we cast out that demon out of that boy? You know, he says, some things only come out by prayer and fasting. Jesus had prepared himself. He was prepared for that encounter so that when it came, he was able to set that boy free. There are people in your life, there are boys just like that in the scripture, that are going to need to be set free. There are people that God's going to bring in your place that's going to need the power of God to transform their lives. And, and, and if you're not prepared, if you haven't uh, be, de developed yourself every single day, you know, you develop yourself until the time where the, where the say, okay, coach, here I am, put me in. And you're ready to go because you have prepared yourself. And so he, so he says here, Listen, if we're going to stand against the enemy and we're going to stand in a place of victory, we have to know the truth of who we are in Christ. We have to know the reality of the righteousness that we, uh, of, of, of who we are in Christ. We have to prepare ourselves every, every, every day. He says in verse 16, he says, above all. Now, if he says the word above all, who thinks that's important? I mean, that's, a, that's, an, that's an important word that kind of should jump out at you. So he says, above all, above everything else, he says, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. So he says, above all, he puts a priority on faith. This is why for the last year and a half, we've been talking faith. We've been talking faith. We've been talking faith. He said in the scripture, above all, pick up the shield of faith. What, is that, what does that mean? We, we, as we talk, about, we talk about faith, I walk by faith and, and not by sight. Faith, faith is this, man. If I get a fiery dart, you know, the fiery dart, man, I got this symptom coming on my body. You got to get out of here, okay? You walk by faith. Listen, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Depression wants to get in my mind. What are, you, are you kidding me? You know? You, you, got, you got to leave right now in, in Jesus' name. I've been set free from every power of, of darkness. You know, as we begin to, to, to learn the word of God and we begin to realize who we are in, in Christ, you know, we, we begin to operate and we practice faith every single day. We practice it in the big things. We practice it in the small things. But he says these, these fiery darts he's going to want to come against us. How do we stop a fiery, because a fiery dart, once it hits, it's going to catch everything on fire. You know, it's, it's pretty common sense, right? It's going to consume whatever it is. How am I going to stop this small thing from becoming a big thing in my life? Well, it begins with faith. 
It begins with faith. You know, I, I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to trust what the word of God says about me over my circumstances around me. You know, and faith, no matter what situation I find myself in, I'm going to rejoice always. Right, Tamar? I'm going to pray without ceasing. In all things, I'm going to give thanks. You know, in every situation. You know, when, when I had that accident and I fell on my face, hey, it's coming along good, right? You know, God's a healer, huh? You can't even tell, right? <laughs> wink, wink. Right, right, Tony? But, but I'm saying, but when, when that happened, you know, I mean, the, the enemy, right away, there's fiery darts being thrown at us, just coming against us. And we chose right there on the floor in the bathroom, you know, we're going to rejoice always. I mean, we had made that decision before anything else was done that we were going to trust in the Lord. And every, everything that happened from that point, you know, until, you know, the whole situation was done, God blessed it. I mean, we walked from one blessing to the next blessing to the next blessing. You might be like, it doesn't sound like a blessing. Listen, sometimes things happen, and when they happen, you know, I'm going to rejoice always, you know, and walk in the blessing of the Lord in those situations. And so I just want to encourage us. You know, he says, above all, take up the shield of faith. And this is why we, this is why we talk faith so much. And I want to encourage us every single day to, to make it a habit, to continue to make it a habit as soldiers of, of God. You know, that I'm, today I choose to walk by faith. What the Word of God says, and if you're not preparing yourself, you don't know what the Word of God says. But as I read the Word and study the Word every single day, I'm going to choose to believe what it says over my circumstances, over what I'm feeling. And sometimes you just got to start, you just got to start confessing, you know. You just got to keep saying it. Let your, let your feelings catch up with your faith. You know, sometimes you just got to be like, oh, God, I walk my faith and not my side. I trust, you know. You know what I'm saying. You know, it's like, you're like, man, I, my, my feelings are here, but I'm not living there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stand. You know, I'm going to trust in the word of God. And devil, you're going to go where you belong under my feet. And I'm going to continue to confess faith and what the word of God says, you know, until that, until it becomes reality, you know, in, in the natural. And so, you know, he says, above all, take up that shield of faith. Speak that faith. Speak the truth of the word of God. He says in verse 17, uh, and take the helmet of salvation. Now, that's an interesting one, a little different than the others. But the helmet of salvation. You know, it, it, well, yeah, we're saved, and we know that we're saved over, you know. But it, but it goes beyond that, and that, that Christ is our head, and that we're the body of Christ. And you might say, well, what, you know, what does that look like? I believe that God is raising up us, and I know, we, and, I, and I pray this over myself every day. God, I, I believe that you are raising us up to, to, to wear the John 14, 12 mantle. Jesus said in John chapter, tw uh, John chapter, um, I get that backwards, John chapter 14, verse 12. He's saying in John chapter 14, verse 12, he said, he says, listen, you're going to do what I do and even greater things. And you might hear that and be like, how? Can I possibly do what Jesus did? And how especially am I supposed to do even greater things? But again, the Bible is always true. You know, it, it wouldn't be, Jesus would not have said that if he didn't expect that from us. And so we should walk in that reality. Okay, that's how I'm going to live. I'm believing for that mantle to be placed upon my life. Now, when Jesus was on the earth, he had one body. He did everything, he, had, he was one location. Everything was done there. But now that he's ascended to the right hand of the Father on the earth, we're the body of Christ. The body of Christ is made up of millions of people all around the world. And so we're gonna be do, operating what he did and doing greater things because you might be doing one thing over there, you might be doing one thing over there, you might be doing one thing over there. And as we're all ministering by the power of the Holy Spirit, Wherever we are, I mean, there's, there's transformation in this world happening. And so he says to remind ourselves, you know, again, the truth of the matter of who we are in Christ. 
that we are made righteous in him, that we are pre to prepare ourselves every day, that we should walk in faith. But we all need to remember that we are the body of Christ. You know, that we are literally the body of Christ. As I walk on, as I walk on this earth, I'd be like, listen, you know, I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm the body of Christ. I mean, Satan, what do you, what do you think you're, what are you going to accomplish here? You know, get back where you belong, under my feet. You know, and so, and, 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 and God has a, has a mission for us and to figure out what that mission is and to step into that reality. He says, finally, he says, and, um, and he says, take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So he says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I, and I like this wording here because he says, the sword of the spirit. Now that we might say, well, it's called the sword of the spirit, or is it the sword that the spirit wields? You know, I kind of think about that sometimes. Because we always, in children's church and kids, and we always call it the sword of the spirit, and you hold the sword of the spirit. But I wonder, is it the sword that the spirit of God in us operates? You know, the word of God. And so as we fill ourselves with the word of God, it allows the spirit that lives inside of us to use the word of God as a weapon against the enemy. It allow the word of the, the, the spirit inside of us, you know, can speak life into someone else. It could speak hope into someone else. It could speak salvation into someone else. It could speak freedom into someone else. And and so to to and we stand in that reality that that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the word of God is wielded through that spirit of God within us. And that's pretty awesome because sometimes we can think, I've got to, I've got to do this thing. But the spirit of God is inside of you and is looking for our obedience that we will, okay, when he says, go, I'm going to go. Yes, sir, I'm going to go. He says, speak. Yes, sir, I'm going to speak. When he says, go talk to that person, you know, I'm going to do. When he says, go knock on your neighbor's door and go, Pray, tell you, say you're going to pray for him and lead him to the Lord. Yes, sir, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get dressed and do it right now. You know, God calls us to do these things. And so we're going to close with, with this tonight. You know, as we talk about standing tall, we went through all these different aspects of the, this, this armor of God and how we're to, to stand against the enemy. But the, the, the final thing here is he, he talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And, and, I, and I want all of us, to, for the spirit of God to be able to operate through us in, in, its, full, in its fullness. And, and so when we become Christians, when we become born again, you know, we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of us. But there's another, there's another step that's supposed to happen. As we read in the book of Acts, you know, the, uh, through the called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You might say, well, what, what's the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, there was a, there, people, they were saved, but there was a shift that happened in the lives of the disciples when they began to operate in the ministry of the, as the apostles, where when they were in the upper room, you know, the, the Holy Spirit came. Pastor Bob talked about it this morning, but the Holy Spirit came and baptized them with fire. And God wants to, to do that in all of our lives that we, we can all walk in. To, to, to in that baptism, and you might say, "Well, man, how, how that seems? How is that even a thing?" Now, depending on who you talk to, I'm going to tell you that the, the 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 way you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and some of you that have been in church for a long time, Pentecostal church, you'd be like, "Really? That's it?" You know, because sometimes we overcomplicate it. Listen, we we get we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit of faith, just like everything else. All right, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, is not you know like. You're not coming up to the front and, and just waiting, you know, for the Holy Spirit to come and, 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 and take you over. And, and you, you got this you're, this, you're waiting for this thing to happen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is, is received very easy, just like salvation. I receive salvation by faith. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith. Father, you said you wanted me to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I receive it right now. All right, there it is. And then, it's a, then the initial evidence is speaking in tongues. Well, well, well how, how, how does that work? Sometimes everybody's waiting for the Holy Spirit to, to take them over. Holy Spirit doesn't possess people. That's what demons do. You know? 
the, 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 Holy, the Holy Spirit doesn't, doesn't do that. You know, how, how, how do you receive the, 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 the personal prayer language speaking in tongues? By faith. How do you do it? You just do it. So you're like, well, that just seems, that's not very spiritual. You just do it. What do you mean you just do it? You just do it. How do you get saved? Father, I believe that you died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. And I repent of my sins and be the Lord of my life. I receive salvation by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm saved. That's from the Holy Spirit. Our Lord, you said you wanted to endue me with power. I don't want to do the ministry without this power. I receive it right now. It's just like that. It's the same faith. You receive it. How do I, now how do, but what about the speaking in tongues part? It's by faith. The same thing. You just start, you just do it. You just start. God gives you the first syllable and, you're, and, and, and you, just, you just begin, you just speak it out. You know, when I told you the story of Gabrielle and how, you know, you know, big, big brain people, they struggle, you know, a little bit. She's way smarter than me. You know, they, they, they struggle, they struggle with it, you know, because they, they overthink everything, you know. And I was like, listen, sweetheart, you don't have to over, you just, you just take it. And she couldn't grasp it. And I had, so finally, I gave her this book to read and she read the book and she bangs on the door. You know, yeah, I told you a story, 10 a.m. You know, I want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit right now. And, and all it was, she just, in her, in her bedroom, she just received it. And the power of the Holy Spirit was like, bam, right there in, the, in her bedroom. It is awesome. You know, but it was just receiving it by faith. So I say all that to say, as we're talking about, you know, this teaching here about wearing the armor of God and being able to stand against the enemy. But, when, to, but the, the, re, the step that we have to take to stand against the enemy, with the, we have to be endued with power. And we have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, and how do we receive, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? You just do it. It's there. It's available. You know, the apostles, they were in some places, and they're like, did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And the guys were like, I don't even know what the baptism of the Holy Spirit was. Nobody's ever even talked to me about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so they were like, well, here, let me tell you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They laid hands on them, and boom, they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And God wants to do that in our church. You know, he's, he's he, you know, that for, for the ministry of power to be able to be operated uh, uh, through the, this church. You know, uh, a power again. It comes through. It comes through that. That it's. You can have all the teachings in the world, and you can categorize categorize it all in your brain, and you, you can be very educated, and and make no impact and for the kingdom of God. But when you begin to actually exercise your faith, when you begin to walk in the reality of what the Word of God says, when you say, "I believe what the Word of God says is true," and God, I want everything you have for me. I may not even get all of it, but I want all of it, and he's going to give it to you.